Oh, the cracking of the knuckles. Just look how beautiful that is. They're just swishing around. Do you have a certain way you eat your wing? Where can you get late night affordable soup dumplings in lower Manhattan? How about a bar that plays golden era hip hop and serves Korean fusion dishes? What about Himakawa Udon? Here is Asian food you should check out in New York City. Welcome to another special episode of Fung Bros Food. I'm about to show you the best soup dumplings, AKA Shalom Bao, in all of New York City. Nan Shang just opened up a new location in the East Village, right here on the legendary St. Mark Street. Don't forget, it's Michelin recommended and it's from New York City. All right, you guys, we're at Nan Shang Shalom Bao. The chain is from Flushing. Now it's here in Manhattan. This is probably one of the best, if not the best, Shanghainese homegrown New York America chain because there's a lot of good chains out there, but they're from Asia Yeah, and and not only do they specialize in Shaolin Bao different types They also have a whole bunch of other authentic Shanghainese dishes Trader Joe's does a lot obviously chicken is a lot more accessible to a lot of people hey, food wise Do you eat your Shaolin Bao in one bite? Do you suck the juice out first guys? I think either way is solid. Just don't eat it with a fork. Mmm. Oh, we got some Shenzhen balls. Mmm. We have the Shenzhen balls. And this is a uh, Sanjin Bo. Sanjin Bo. Obviously, in Shanghainese, this is Solun Bo. David, you know what I think is really interesting about the Shenzhen Bao? Is that I've seen it in all different sizes and forms versus the Shaolin Bao keeps it pretty, like, the same depending on, on like, the shape wise, depending on where you go. But this one is always different. Be careful about the Shenzhen Bao. It might have a lot of juice in it, too. Mmm. Got blowing up like a little whistle. Ooh. If you go to Shanghai, those are gonna be the top two bowls you get is a Shaolin Bao and a mm. Shenzhen Bao. Oh, so crispy, juicy. Look at that inside. Of course, Andrew, a more universal Chinese dish. Obviously, Shenzhen Bao, Shaolin Bao, they tend to be more, I guess, specific to the Shanghai, Hangzhou, Suzhou region, but um. Wuxi as well, but th this is gonna be something different. This is just like a guo tie over here, and that's a shui jiao. Yeah. And these are beef dumplings, and you know that because they're red, and that's actually carrot juice that's in the dumpling wrapper. I think that the uh, the colored dumpling wrappers with natural ingredients that was like one of the biggest advent, you know, inventions to the dumpling movement mm. because you can you can see what's in it based off the color. You know what I like about this? There's like a sense of like vegetable vibes with the beef, so it kind of tastes like sort of healthy. But like, I like it. You know, it's like beefy and hearty. Well, there's some celery in here. Mm. Um, It's almost like a beef stew. Wow. A dish that came, went from Shandong to Taiwan to Roland Heights mm. to New York City. This is a dish that's actually American board. And this is why this dish, being a Nanshang is actually interesting because Nanshang also American born. This is one of my favorite dishes ever, the Nero Drimbing, and you have the scallion pancake that's crispy, wrapped about, wrapped around juicy beef, and then you got the hoisin sauce right there. Oh! So if you guys want to know the history, in Shandong, they just eat a big stalk of green onion inside of like a, uh, like a tumyo bing, mm -hmm. essentially. But then it went to Taiwan, it changed a little bit, and then Taiwanese went to Roland Heights, and then it changed again to add the beef and the hoisin and everything. Guys, this is the closest thing to the Chinese, like, burrito. Mm. So the, 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 way this way, the way it is, it looks like a quesadilla. Oh my God. Or a molita. Ooh. Ooh. Love that. Yo, it's almost like a hybrid between a Nuro Dwembin and a Peking duck wrap. Ooh. Because it almost has some of that, uh, like, southern Peking duck, like, Tianmianjiang vibe. Hey, I will say there's credit to Nan Shang for serving such authentic Shanghainese dishes, though. Because, you know, they could just focus on, you know, your your standard, like, um, Shanghai chow, chow ming, but, uh... Chow nian gao? Chow, oh, yeah, chow nian gao, and all, like, the, you know, the commercial dishes that everybody likes, but they really bring in the tofu. The fact that you're bringing the, the tofu soups... Mmm. Mmm. That's the combo. Wow. Guys, we're gonna go into the crispy noodles. You kind of got to let the kind of the gravy set in to make part of the noodles soft But as you can see Oh, you need to put some- Oh! Hold on, you, wait, wait, here, here. put some hay too or some hay too on there 
Oh, the cracking of the knuckles oh, and just, the just little chiropractic work yeah. right there. Over Fun. here, they've got the Nan Shang Hao special fried rice. Um, it looks like a slight variation of a Yang Chow fried rice, but you know, like we said, man, I, I honestly, for a chain from New York City, Nan Shang has really impressed me because this is actually very, very much quite authentic to the Shanghai palate. Um, a little smala on there. That's what fried rice is one of my favorite things to put smala on. The crispy seafood. Chow mein. Listen guys, I know some people think there's not a lot of nuances in fried rice, but I'm telling you, the way they uh, got the wet rice here, it's not too chewy. I'm actually not a big fan of like super dry fried rice mm -hmm. with like the three day aged like rice kernels. This, mm. this is right out my alley, Nan Shang. Mm. Wrapping up our excursion through the Nan Shang menu here, we got the dessert pastries. Now, here we have the red bean one. Oh, we have hold a hold durian hold one. Hold Let me break this apart. Oh, Let me see. It. It okay, this is red. Hong Dao. Yeah, Hong Dao in Cantonese or Hong oh. Dao. David, David, you are, this durian. is the one you gotta try. Oh my gosh, it's gooey. The durian, durian is gooey. It looks quality, it looks quality. Sometimes people be shortchanging on the durian, they did not shortchange it here. Actually, this is a savory pastry. This has ham in it. Wow. Turnip with ham. Oh, oh that's, that's, that's real traditional. And then, okay, of course, you have this traditional pumpkin uh, pastry right here that's fried. And then you got some new desserts that you've never seen before. They are new to this location and new to the Nan Shang's menu because they're always innovating. We have the ube buns. What? Ube red bean. Dave, ube, the trendy ube. Shout out to the Philippines. Man. My God, let's pop this over. They look like little Dragon Balls. Ah! Little dra that's the black sesame one, actually. Oh, that's the ube Dragon Ball. All right, you guys, we are here at Hidden Tiger. Of course, you know, with the owner of Fat Buddha, Hidden Tiger, Lord Kimchi himself, Cliff. What's up, guys? Yo, Cliff, tell us about this transformation, and this is Hidden Tiger in the back of Cafe Joa, and then this is a speakeasy now, but you, you still have some of the soul of Fat Buddha here. Yeah, 100%. We uh, tried to reinvent ourselves during the pandemic, decided to open up a cafe in the front, and have a little speakeasy door to the back and elevate the whole experience. So, uh, Fat Buddha is kind of like MTV, long line, a lot of young kids. Uh, this is like the VH1 experience, a little older, a little yeah. more grown. I, I always see a lot of really famous graffiti artists here. Yeah. Yeah, because I know that you, you know, you're deep from the old New York world from the, you know, 80s, 90s, early 2000s, yeah. and you have so many connections in there. So listen guys, if you want to see somebody who was influential in the boom bap scene in New York City. In the hip hop culture. In the hip hop culture. Yeah. In general. I started off as a fan and they just started reciprocating the love and it's really crazy, so. Hell yeah. I never thought it would happen. But along with the elevation of the drinks, the vibe, everything's more grown, us more mature, the food, it took another yeah, level too, right? David, let's say less, can you flambe the cheese, please? Yeah, sure. Because this is a new dish. This is a kimchi arancini. Arancini ball, right. Oh my so gosh. this normally had a mozzarella ball in the center, oh, but I'm actually lactose intolerant. So I put a, there's a little bit of uh, kimchi in there. Yeah, I'm just gonna pour can, it Can I just pour, yeah, just pour it all Oh my goodness. Listen, anytime you can flambe anything at the table, I just feel like it's worth it. Better mm. than guacamole. Just kidding. Oh, man. So how much do you flambe? How much do you know is a, is a good amount to melt it? You don't want to push it. All right, man, let's cut into Dude, this. Dude, this is dope. Go okay. for it, man. All right, let's cut into it. Listen, guys, you can get a kimchi arancini ball while listening to Jay-Z's Reasonable Doubt. <laughs> Ooh, crispy. You, you hear that? Mm. Sponsor me, like Yeah. Mm. That's good. That's kind of like a kimchi fried rice ball. Yeah, that's basically what it is. Let's get it. It's Here's good. A, there's a... Mm. The depth of flavor there is ranch. There's ranch <laughs> on the bottom, a little ranch on the top. Moving on, what we got here? The classic wings, right? Yeah, these are the yobo wings. Yobo in Korean is honey, and usually uh, only like older married couples say that. Mm -hmm. and, and I want to do oh, note that- They call each other yobo. Yobo, yeah. Oh, okay. <clears throat> That's like bae. Yobo. Right. 
but it's more formal. So, so this I, is the old Korean person's bae is Yobo. Yobo, right. These are <laughs> the, usually only older people. Would it be like Darlin? Maybe. What about these wings right here? These are the dragon wings. They're essentially our ode to the buffalo wing. Okay. Has a bit of gochujang in there, some other spices that makes it only available here. So mm. if you really like it, you pretty much just have to come here and get it. A dragon wing. Yeah, that's good. Like you said, mm. that's like the city of Buffalo meeting the city of Seoul. That's good. That's really good. Old school tteokbokki, which is uh, rice cakes with a bit of gochujang and some other things. There's a little mm. bit of cheese in there mm. as well. These are great when you're drinking. You Mom know, did. funny enough, I don't really like tteokbokki as a dish. Those are really good though. Nice. Uh, here I got the pork bun. This is a classic carryover from the Fat Buddha days, right? Yeah, there's a pulgogi, uh, oh. pulgogi beef bun. Pulgogi. Bao bun. Mmm. Still good. Man, shout out to Hidden Tiger guys. Come by during the day if you want coffee. They'll ch they got they got the coffee to energize you, and then after that you come get your cocktails, mocktails. Anyway. Peace. <laughs> <laughs> what you are looking at is some udon that you have never seen before in America. Yes, this is the only restaurant in New York City and America that sells the Himokawa style udon. And this is the really wide noodles. It kind of reminds me of the thick wide uh, hand torn noodles like from Xi'an, except it's made in the udon way, which is completely different actually. So here we have our tempura too. I mean, I don't know guys, this might be the best udon in New York City. Let me put a little pink salt in there. But first really, the star is the udon. Look, it comes out so nicely. I mean, guys, I just gotta dip it, man, because I didn't want them to get cold, so I didn't want to wait too long. Ooh. Mmm. Really light. Let's try the tempura. Mmm. Can I eat them together, though? Mmm. This is Applewood bacon tempura. I've never had Applewood bacon before. I've never had bacon tempura. Wow. Next up, we got the Himagawa in broth. Now, this is gonna be a little bit different, but you can see, just look how beautiful that is. They're just swishing around, just swimming, just hitting each other. Mmm, I smell a little bit of ginger. Let's taste the broth first. Mmm, okay. A little saltier, I like that, wow. Let's try it. Mm. Kind of feel like the hand-torn noodles, sort of, but it's kind of like between that and the Chinese like chang fun or chang fun like rice noodle, like the big wide rice noodle. So it's like, it's kind of this mixture, so it's pretty cool. I would say the broth is not like as fatty as like a tonkatsu as you'll get at other ramen spots, but really clean tasting, really tasty. Here we got, I believe this is a chicken tempura. Mmm. And then, I think one thing that's really cool is in this little box right here, they got peppers. So you just peel this little knob, you shake it off. You want a little spice? Boom, 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 boom. Boom, 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 boom. Comes out kind of nicely. All right, so you, you want to have udon like you've never had it, definitely check it out, man, right over in East Village. And do not sleep on the sweet potato tempura, amazing, and the green tea. The texture of the noodles were on point. I loved it. Man, Himogawa. All right, you guys, the entrees have arrived here at Tapraya. I'm telling you, this is something the Upper East Side has never seen before. You've got a hyper-authentic pad thai here, no peanut butter flavors. You've got a beef pad si, ooh, ooh. Uh, a lot of Chinese inspired dishes. Oh, you got your boat noodles right here. I'm about to just throw the aromatics in there. This is actually hard to find in New York. Yeah. For some reason, 
Thai bone noodles all over LA, hard to find in New York. And then here you have the crab curry, which you're gonna take these little balls of noodles, this vermi this rice vermicelli and a wrap, and then you dip it in this crab curry right here. You're saying like man. Superman. Oh man, yeah, it is like a Thai dipping ramen. And then you of course got the cow soy with the chicken leg, the two different types of noodles, fried noodles, boiled noodles. And this is, this is like a very deep, brown man i'm excited about this and i know that cow soy is from the southern part of thailand where the food has a uh, more like burmese kamai curry influence it's indian influence yo but i'm not gonna lie david i am curious to see how they did the patsy you because this is considered one of those mainstream regular dishes but i got to know mm. oh. I'm so absolutely the best pad CU I've had. The beef is super beefy, chunky. Oh man, everything's coming through. The wok hay, because you know Thais, they, they like the wok hot. Mm. Not your average pad Thai. All right, guys, straight from the shores of Phuket, we've got the Peng Po. Mm. I'm gonna take this, dip it in the crab curry. You got white chunks of crab meat. Oh, oh my gosh, that's a crazy bite right there. Yo. Let me go in on these boat noodles. Um, like we said, not all Thai restaurants even wanna serve boat noodles in New York City, but I love, it's a treat every time I find it. It's got that pork, pig blood kind of mixed in there got some oh dang i should be using chopsticks but whatever yeah how you enjoy the Thai mm. noodle is it good so savory so fragrant i love that get the boat noodles get if there's boat noodles on the menu you gotta get it here we have the Cow soy, a lot of people's favorite dish, man. It rains from Chiang Mai, a little northern, northern Thailand. But look at look at that. That's how you know the chicken thigh just falls off. Gotta be dark meat. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh oh the bones just gonna fall off like that. Hell yeah. All right. Mix that all up. Oh, with the egg noodles. Man, very deep curry flavor. Surprise. That's infinitely good, man. Infinitely. I think Sapraya is bringing a sense of Thai food that has never, never been here before. Never East Side. So. Listen, guys, we're in a brand new wave of Thai food. Third wave, new wave, and uh, come check out Sapraya. All right, last but not least, we got the Pai Yang, which is a filleted uh, branzino. So it's kind of like, it's made like a Gaiang with the chicken steak, except it's just, it's fish. Shoulder sausage. Oh, and then here you got the sauces. This is a sweet one. This is the more spicy one. I'm gonna go with the sweet one. Cause you know, I ain't a Thai person. I can't handle all the heat. It's grilled perfectly. I'm sure they got a charcoal grill back there. They're doing authentic things. I like Tapraya, man. Check it out in the Upper East Side if you're looking for Thai food. All right, here at Mad for Chicken, man, they got two different styles of soy garlic. This is a spicy one. As you can see, it's got a little red tint. And then you got the original one right here. Now you can see the difference, right? Yep, yep, yep. Okay, and then you got mandu, which is the Korean dumplings, of course, and they lather them up with soy garlic. But here they got one of their fusion dishes, the mac and cheese with bulgogi. Oh my gosh, you know me. I'm just gonna have to take a bite of this real quick. Now you go ahead, pick, pick some chicken. Oh man, you know I'm going with them. Chicken mm. wing. Mm. Yo, bulgogi on mac and cheese actually really works. Yo, that's fire. Mm. Spicy sort of garlic, man. Got a pretty big kick to it. Yeah. I like it. They didn't skimp on the spice. Mm, crunchy skin. You have a certain way you eat your wings. Yeah. I eat the two sides first. 
and I break I break the bone in the middle. Then I eat the meat. Pause. You do this. Well, you're eating a drum. I'm eating a wing. All right. I'm gonna try their soy garlic, and this is the way I do it. Watch. I'm gonna break the bone a little bit. I snap it. Do you see this? I see it. And I'm gonna push it all into one bite, like a lollipop. It kind of ugly, but it works. I think you did it wrong, bro. All right, going in on the bagogi mac. It's the return of the mac. Oh, no, no. Bro, this is good. This is good. That's this is fire. good. Fire. Guys, I'm gonna try the mandus. Always judge a Korean restaurant by their mandus. Or not. Mmm. You are right. Because the mandu already got the flavor on the outside, you know? Yeah. So you don't have to dip it in soy sauce or anything. It's good. Wow. But this thing, you know what it is, man. Topoki with the fish cake. Uh, a little fresh scallies on top. The scallies go to valleys. Mmm. You guys know me. I'm not even the biggest fan of tapoki of the dish, but this one has a really good like flavor, and the fish cake are very flavorful. I like it, man. And the tapoki tender. I really like the spices that mm. they have on their seasonings. The spices are really good. Last but not least, we got chicken sandwiches here at Mad for Chicken. And of course, you got the kimchi chicken bowl. Now look at this chicken sandwich. This thing is huge. Do you see this whole piece of chicken exceeding the bun? That's why it's important, guys. And a lot of it's topped with a bunch of fresh scallions. And you know I love my scallies. I'm part of the scally family. Oh my gosh, Nell, would you would you like to try? I will partake look at that. on the egg on it too. Chicken sando. Wow. Guys, when they say they're mad for kimchi chicken. Kimchi on it, actual kimchi. They are indeed mad for chicken. Cheers. Mmm. Oh, man. It's just dripping. Wow. Yeah. Let's stop. A little bit of that like Thai sweet chili spice with the kimchi, but the green scallions and the egg is rounding everything out. The fried egg, man. Killed mm. it. All right, here's the kimchi bowl. I'm gonna put my egg on top back because that's what I want to pack that in. Oh my gosh, look at all this japchae. Oh, japchae and rice. I didn't even know what's in this. This is a bunch of surprises right here. Let's go. Got japchae, rice, chicken, kimchi. Mmm. Yo, surprisingly, everything flows together. Wow. That is mad for chicken. They are truly mad for chicken here.